Welcome to Bible College Wales Lecture Channel and Jesus the Healer. This is Lecture 9, The Faith That Takes. And this is your lecturer, David P. Griffiths, welcoming you to... I'm telling... Well, what can I say? This is so amazing what we're going to discover today. The faith that takes a realization that takes us to this plane of faith which is so awesome that no doubt exists in that realm. And it is based on a very very simple principle now if we accept that the word of God is God's testament God's last will and testament and if we compare this to the last will and testament of an individual when the reading of the will takes place, the people look back so as to gain the benefits of the will. Because the benefits of the will come from someone who has died. This is God's will before me now the benefits of which are for us all who have accepted him, the Lord Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. And as we look back, we start realizing in the spirit of all that Jesus has gained for us and left for us on this earth that we have before us the victory of Christ Jesus in his last will and testament it's in here so as we move into the faith that takes as Bosworth puts it our course being based on Christ the healer from F.F. Bosworth we start realizing that to move in that faith we look back to the cross of Calvary to when Jesus died as in an earthly case we look back at the life of an individual who has died and the receivers of that person's will gain the benefits such as it is with the faith that takes and as we come to Looking at our notes, which you will have downloaded for this, our lecture nine, we come to the Word of God, which declares boldly in Mark 11, 20 through 22 through to 26, have faith in God. Just as you would have faith, a sort of earthly faith, at the reading of a will of someone who has died, that that person has left benefits to beneficiaries. Likewise, so it is with the Word of God. Because the whole Word of God is a testament. The Old Testament, the New Testament of a person who has died. So we can call the word of God, God's last will and testament, because the canon is complete, the will is complete, and is for those who come unto Jesus to receive his benefits. Therefore the Bible declares, through Jesus himself, have faith in God. And he said, verily I say unto you, and continues to say it. 
that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Well, the will is clear. It's been written. It is God's evidence. It is God's proof. It is God's reality. It is our faith. The word of God. Hence Wigglesworth said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how I feel. I am moved by what I believe. I believe the word, meaning the will. I believe the will. I believe the testament. I believe the last will and testament, which is the word of Almighty God. And as we believe this, as we believe that which is written, we have victory over the enemy who would look to suppress that written evidence with circumstance. So the faith that takes is that which is built on God's last will and testament. Shall not doubt in his heart. So what do you believe? God's will and testament, as it is written, or that which is around you. Jesus continued to say, shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. And this is the intercession. And this is what I want to explain in the healing ministry. Oh, it's no formula. It's not just saying words. It is being in tune with the written will, unlike earthly wills which were written by someone's dead who's now passed on. The one who died has risen again and continues to say it. And so the word of Almighty God, oh, I've got to explain this. I, I long for you to grasp it. The faith that takes is that which the intercession saith. And it's there, it goes round and round and round, and that intercession is life and life and abundance. Can you grasp this? Have faith in God. Believe that those things which he saith, continuous tense, See, when you read the real Bible, the authorized King James, you have the continuous sense. Not he said, but he saith. That's the intercept. There's Romans 8, 26, 27. The continuous intercession. Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And that's the tune with the intercession. Can, can, I, can I get this over? It's not from there, it's from there. You know it, and he says it, and he, he, he's in tune with you. Those joined to the Lord are one spirit. If you're in one spirit, you're in the same heart and mind. Therefore, continues Jesus, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe ye, being the corporate ye, believe that ye receive them, ye shall have them, because you know when the intercession's there, you have them. There's no doubt, see the doubts are in the mind. It's no doubt in the heart. Where does it say? Shall not doubt in his heart. Doesn't say mind. Hallelujah! Do you, do you, do you get it? <laughs> See, all the time the mind gets hit by all sorts of stuff. You go and see the doctor, you hear all sorts of stories. Got a bad dose of mange or something. 
But then you tune to the intercession. Whoa, oh, oh, you, you go to another plane. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe ye, receive them, ye shall have them. When ye stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, You know, I, I got to show you something. It, it, this is so amazing. Someone said to me over the last week, oh, oh, what we do when people curse us is, is send it back to them. I'm thinking I'm feeling uncomfortable about this. Doesn't the Jesus say, bless those who curse you? You know, we have people on the internet send all kinds of... Uh, Abusive language, including one family member. Not the immediate family, a further member who's gone away from Christ. Like Saul chasing David type of scenario. And curses come through that scenario towards us. Well, what does the Bible say? We send blessings back. Hallelujah! Bless you! In the name of Jesus. Because I know that person's being convicted by the Spirit of God. is going to be drawn in, be magnificently brought back into the kingdom and be working with us here. I know that, known that for years. So I'm going to bless him rather than curse. He might say all terrible things on the internet, but I bless him and I love him. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you feel the power? That's why it says, if you have aught against any, right, forgive. Well, you've forgiven if you send a blessing. <laughs> Amen. Send a blessing. So I'm sending blessings back. Hallelujah. Now, do you see how to move in the faith that takes? Amen. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Have you got it? <laughs> Amen. I'm, 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 I'm hesitant. I, I want you to get it. It's not formula. The healing ministry is amazing, as long as you don't think about it. The faith that takes this shall not doubt where in his heart. And then you're forgiven and you don't feel the condemnation. Why don't you feel the condemnation? Because you sent blessing instead of curses. Hallelujah. So go and eat your Harry Potter books. It's all about cursing. We don't want cursing, we want blessing. If you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. I think a sign of forgiveness is to send a blessing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we send blessing. If he's after one coat, you give him another coat. If I had another coat, I'd give it to him. <laughs> Have you grasped it? And so we come to Bosworth, and he quotes. What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. It's on page one of your notes of this lecture nine. I love this course. It's brilliant. Because the Lord really used F.F. F. Bosworth, the great evangelist. We've covered the subjects after an introduction of those who need healing, healing in the atonement. Asked the question, is healing for all? Dealt with the Lord's compassion how to appropriate the redemptive and covenant blessing of bodily healing, dealt with appropriating faith, how to receive healing from Christ, last time how to have your prayers answered. Didn't that stir things up? And now the faith that takes. What is the faith that takes? God's last will and testament. Bosworth pointed out, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
Hope looks to the future in improvements. Faith looks to the past in victory. <laughs> Amen. Because you don't go to a solicitor's office to hear the reading of a last will by looking forward to what that person is going to do for you in the, per in the, in the future. You look back to what they had written in the past. Likewise, with God's last will and testament, you look back. That is the faith that takes. Amen. Bosworth gives some quotes from the weeping prophet, Jeremiah. From 3210, it's there on page one. It moves on to page two. And he points out in Jeremiah, the title deed is repeatedly spoken of as the evidence. And the word of God is our title deed. It's that which is written. It's that we can stand from. It's that which we're own. we own because it's been given to us. It's a title deed. Like if you own a house, you have the title deed of the house. And God has given us his title deed. And the evidence of this is that which is written. Hence Jesus said to the devil, it is written. And Jeremiah continuously uses the word evidence, meaning the title deed. And I subscribe the evidence. I subscribe the title deed and sealed it and took witnesses. Even in the world, there are witnesses to title deeds. And weighed him, the money, in the balances. Then example two on page two, from 3211. So I took the evidence of the purchase. I took the evidence. I took the title deed of the purchase. If you purchase a house, you have a title deed to show you have purchased it. So I took the title deed, the evidence of the purchase. Both that which was sealed according to the law and custom and that which was open. And then in 32.12, the next verse, And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Barak, the son of Neriah, the son of Marse, in the sight of Hanamiel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And in the same chapter, moving on to verse 14, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidences, take these title deeds, take in today's context the word of Almighty God. Take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed. Is the word sealed? It's sealed. And this evidence which is open, put them in an earthen vessel that they may continue many days. That's interesting. Place the word in an earthen vessel. What has Christ done with his title deed has placed the word in earthen vessels. <laughs> amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can you be excited and say amen? amen. And then in verse 16, when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase, Unto Balak, the son of Neriah, I paid unto the Lord, saying, and we move on to verse 44, Men shall buy fields for money, and subscribe evidences, and seal them. We have that in present-day society. And take witnesses in the land of Benjamin. We have that in everyday society. In Great Britain, we call them solicitors. I think in the United States, attorneys. So you have different names, but you go into a legal office and witnesses are brought in 
to sign the evidences of a document. In the places about Jerusalem, the cities of Judah, in the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the valley, and in the cities of the south, I will cause their captivity to return, said the Lord. Oh, this is within a certain context. And Bosworth explains, your deed is the evidence or proof that you own your home. Faith is the title deed to what you have not yet seen. If you are the beneficiary of a rich man's will, you are already wealthy the moment the rich man dies because it is written in the will even though you may not have received it yet. What it takes is a reading of the will. That is why the scripture says he sent his word and healed them. The beneficiary, the benefits of the will of God come through the reading of the will from the heart. Now, when I was thrown by a demon high up into a person's loft, when round the loft came flying down on top of a radiator in Cheshire, England, my head was completely cut open. I was awaiting the reading of the will. <laughs> Others would just pray. Well, praying is not the reading of the will unless you're praying in the Spirit, one in the Spirit, and how to have the faith that takes, believing that you receive, comes by allowing Christ the preeminence to begin the intercession before the Father. Whoa. Doesn't the Bible say praying always in the Spirit? Reaction prayer is not what is called for. My head was cut open. There'd be people who pray out of reaction. No, we're not called to pray out of reaction. We're called to pray by the Spirit. <laughs> and await the reading of the will. <laughs> Amen. I was taken to Warrington General Hospital. Procedure was about to take place after being examined. But the will had not been read yet. And the great solicitor or attorney of heaven, he came. He is our intercessor. And he said, join me in the reading of the will. Where two or three are agreed on anything. And I joined him in Isaiah 53. And by his stripes I was healed. And was, didn't have to go through the procedure which... I was having to go through had the will not been read. He read the will before me. Just so, declared Bosworth, everything bequeathed to us in our Lord's last will and testament is already ours by virtue of the death of Jesus, the testator. Faith is simply using what belongs to us. So the will has been written, and as he reveals, such as if you're a minister, I'm speaking to you as ministers now, or potential ministers, as students, as you study this course. As you minister to others, those led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, you move from in there, not by the reaction to the situation. That's why you don't ask what's wrong with people. The rule when they go to the doctor. That, that's rare, but I have a rule that a good doctor knows what's wrong with me before I've even said anything. Because that means they have spirituality and understanding in the spirit. A good doctor knows what's happening before you say anything. How much more then should a minister know what is going on in the life of a person he's ministering to without asking any earthly questions. 
So I'll question one. You enjoying this faith today? I tell you, it is. It's liberating, isn't it? Because it takes the pressure off you to have the faith because we live by the faith of the Son of God. <laughs> amen. Uh, amen. 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 The pressure's off. So question one, in the world there's an expression relating to a will, namely last will and testament. Explain how this relates to the inheritance God has given you, remembering there are two testaments in the Bible. Can these be therefore be counted as God's will for 40 points? <laughs> Amen. I love it, I love it, I love it. Amen. Coming to page five. Number two, our Emancipation Proclamation. Calvary, declared Bosworth, was our Emancipation Proclamation. From everything outside of the will of God. We are simply to believe what God says he's done for us. And act upon it. Taking our blood-bought liberty just as the slaves of the South did after the Emancipation Proclamation by Abraham Lincoln. Just so, by believing and acting on the Word of God, everything that belongs to us in Christ becomes available at once. To accept any contrary physical evidence in preference to the Word of God is to nullify the Word as far as you are concerned. Faith is believing what God says in the face of the contrary evidence of the senses. Amen. We are to be steadfast in resisting. There's reasons for doubting everything contrary to the word of God. Faith means we've left the sense realm. Now, question two, and you need to look at Galatians 2.20. Need I say always in the authorized King James Version? Or if you're using a, a language, another language, make sure you've got Textus Receptus there. And come to studying Galatians 2.20. What is faith? And that again is for 40 points. And as we come now to page 17, or rather page seven and number three the six senses bosworth declares this as perfume is non-existent to the sense of hearing so you can't hear perfume can you so what we take by faith according to mark eleven twenty four, is at first non-existent to the five natural senses so there are things your senses cannot discern. You do not doubt the existence of what you see because you can't smell or taste or hear it. Then why doubt the existence of what you have taken by faith, the sixth sense? Because you can't yet see or feel it. So we ask the question, our question three, how did Paul live by faith? Give examples. And that is for yet another 40 points. As we move over to page 10 and number 4, having the right mental attitude. Bosworth declaring, no person who allows his mind to be ruled by his senses can have victorious faith. In effect, if a minister, if a pastor, or whatever you, evangelist, asks a person what is wrong with them, they are, in fact, seeking a sense answer. The mind is ruled by the senses, living in a realm of uncertainty. 
because the natural senses discern an ever-changing climate, an ever-changing world. So until God's word gains mastery over your mind, your mind will be swayed by feelings and by things you see or hear rather than the word of Almighty God. The mind and thoughts of those seeking healing must be renewed so as to be brought into harmony with the mind of God, as revealed in the Bible and pointed out in our healing literature, declared Bosworth. Faith for God's promised blessings is the result of knowing and acting on God's word, on God's title, deed. So the only right mental attitude is the renewed mind. And there it is in Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to this world. Yet we have Christians being conformed to what the doctor says, what the nurse says, what the vet says, all of that, which really is by the by, because that can change day by day. What doesn't change is what the Word of God says. And that's what alarms people. Those who live in the sense realm cannot grasp the things of faith. And they attack the people of faith because they have a different logic. The logic of the God of this world is Satan. If you have your mind renewed with the mind of Christ, you walk in a different realm to that which is in this world. You have had your minds renewed, transformed. Ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So the question four is, relate this to the living life by the Spirit, completely directed by the Lord, which is our question four. As we move on to page five and number five. Ah, thank you. Lindsay corrected me there. Page 12 and number five. Not page five and number five, but page 12 and number five. If you were moving by the Spirit, you would have known that. <laughs> Amen. I'm only joking. All right. Number five. Having before seeing, Bosworth declared this. Walking by faith is walking by the kind of sight which sees and is occupied with eternal things with God and his promises, his faithfulness, and the many other perfect reasons for faith, it was believing without seeing that Peter received joy unspeakable and full of glory. And Peter declared this from 1 Peter 1, 7 through to 9, that the trial of your faith, man, you'll be tried with this. Oh, all manner of things. We have all manner of things happen today. We had a socket blow up today. Brian Mason's program, which went out live stream today, uh, was held back 25 minutes. Find the fault, fix the fault, and all the, and all the rest of it. I tell you this, and let me explain to you. You will be tried over this. Hallelujah. Can you keep your joy in amongst the trials? Keep your humor in amongst the trials. Dance in amongst the trials. Sing praises unto the Lord in amongst the trials. Because Paul and Silas were chained up. And instead of moaning and groaning, they chose to praise the Lord because their natural eyes came under their spiritual ones. And they saw freedom and liberation in the spirit which kapowed the natural, the natural being under the spirit. Hence, in British law, if you do our course, British Justice, the Foundations, no more EU law, you will see in British law the spiritual takes preference over the temporal. Hence, we have the highest court called the House of Lords, spiritual and temporal. That's for these reasons why Elizabeth I brought about these things. Surprises a lot of people. 
because he swear on the Bible, never read it, or not read it for years. Start reading it, freak out time to the natural mind. You have to get saved, born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, start moving in these things. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Can you be victorious? i tell you how you be victorious with the trial of faith. Move from here and not from there. And have your mind renewed to your spirit. Now question five. Smith Wigglesworth said he was not moved by what he saw. Not moved by what he felt. What was he moved by? Well we've been covering the answer to this question. Throughout our course today. Which now. I tell you. <laughs> we conclude this part now. Well, how do we conclude it? Shall not doubt in our hearts. Our minds renewed. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. Have you been tried in the fire? Coming into ministry, you will be. As Lindsay comes up to sing the lovely song, He Touched Me. I tell you this, you can hear her because she's clattering the microphone. Um, <laughs> As she comes up, she's going to sing this lovely song. Come on, Lindsay. Ooh. How, how many battles have we had, Lindsay? Oh, oh. Battles. And do we have the joy unspeakable? We still do. We still do. Man. Do we still have laughs and jokes? We, do, we, we do. still do. All We're time, rejoicing. Yeah. We get it hounded. We have a hostile group chasing yeah, us. Yeah. We send them blessings and Ooh, we love them. Yes. We Oh, praise the Lord, free. praise the Lord. Lindsay Singh, God bless you. And there's some he great songs. You oh, know. yes. This is one of them. It there's is. another one about I'm free from the curse of the law. And all oh, these yes. Ones. Fantastic songs. Indeed. Um, songs of faith. And this is one of them. Indeed. He Hallelujah. Me. Here we go. He touched me, Lindsay. Are we ready? We are.
hurts my soul. Something happened. I know, I know. He touched me and made me whole. Yes, something happened. I know, I know. He touched me and made me. Thank you for joining us today on Jesus the Healer. We give him all the praise and all the glory, the praise that takes off. Precious, precious, precious. And we invite you to be a student. Yes, we do. Of the Bible College Wales, you can contact us at P.O. Box 106, Colwyn Bay, Conway, Wales, double L 284XJ. Phone us at 01492 54451. That is if you are from UK, but if you're from overseas, we love to hear from you too. 0044-1492-54451. Our special student's email address is phcc4219 at aol.com. TV channel. Email is ECCTV4219 at gmail.com. What is our heart at the Bible College Wales? It is to reach every creature with the gospel. We are called to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. Come and join us. What's the price? As he laid his life, so we are called to lay down ours. And as we do this, we gain it. And we gain him who becomes our life. We live by the faith of the Son of God. So we long for you to join us here at the Bible College Wales at ecctv.org. And oh yes, if you want further details on how to contact us, it's coming up now on your screen with details of our websites too. We love you and we bless you. Lindsay and I say bye for now.